change the way you look at things the things you look at change that what exists reality itself is gorgeous it is the plenum the fullness of total joy the universe is a celebration it's a firework show to celebrate that existence is wow we for those of us seeking a life of meaning and purpose, capturing fulfillment in every moment of now, seeking the truth of our reality so we can live this life to its fullest, this is the Live This Life Podcast. And I'm your host, Hugh Cummings. I'm here to inspire you to ask yourself the question every day. Are you living party killing time? What's good, everyone out there in podcast land? Hope life is treating you well. And I am super excited for this one today because we are going to dive into chapter one and two of the transformative book, Oneness. Um, This one, you've heard me say time and time again that uh, this one has been majorly transformative for me in my life. And, you know, I say all the time also that everything happens for a reason. And this book is definitely one that has come to me in divine timing. It has come to me in just divine ways. Um, I am really not a believer of mere coincidence and chance, but rather providence and consequence. Uh, Providence meaning the uh, basically divine guidance uh, happening through divine guidance. And consequence is something that is the result of an action. So um, both of these things, I think, apply to how this book has not only manifested in my life, but manifested today on the podcast. Uh, This book originally came to me at sort of a provincial time in my life where many of the right people and the right places and the right things lined up to launch my life in a whole different direction. Um, A few essential podcasts back in the day, about seven or eight years ago, really awakened me to start looking at life totally differently. Um, You know, and out of that, a few new connections, uh, some people that I would consider dear friends and mentors came to me around that time as well. And then this book came to me at the same time and I was introduced to the uh, the awesomeness that was the book of oneness. Um, so, you know, this book gripped me so much because it was ultimately exactly what I was looking for at the exact right time. Um, this, this book came to me at a time when really I was looking for some spiritual guidance and I guess what a lot of people do when they're they're sort of hitting like a rock bottom point in their life, they try to to find spirituality, whether they try to find God, they're born again Christian, they do they do whatever. Um, people go through a whole bunch of stuff. And for me, I, I guess I kind of started with the Bible at a certain point. And um, I guess that kind of fell apart for me as a spiritual teacher, just because I, I dug into the history of where it came from. I wanted to know more about it. I've always heard about it, I'd been there in the drawer, you know, everywhere you go in the hotel rooms and stuff. But I never actually really picked it up other than small bits and pieces. And before I dove into it, you know, I started actually reading it a lot. And then I, I, you know, the inquisitive part of me kicked in and said, you know, where is this thing really actually coming from? Learn your history a little bit more. So I did. And I, I stumbled across things like the Council of Nicaea that that was, um, if you're not familiar with it, it was just a bunch of politicians sat around, bishops, everybody. Um, I think it was 325 AD and removed a whole bunch of books out of the Bible. And uh, some of those were very, very powerful texts. They were some amazing, amazing things that were taken out of the Bible. And then uh, then I learned about the um, about King James and, uh, you know, another politician that also altered and retranscribed the book. And it changed the meaning quite a bit in certain areas. Um, So I didn't agree with the fact that we were putting so much weight on something that several politicians throughout the past few thousand years have significantly changed and altered it. So I felt kind of lost at that point. And, uh, you know, right around that time is when I found this text and it was an amazing, inspiring uh, thing that I couldn't put down. I couldn't stop listening to it. Originally, I had come across it on a podcast 
And uh, I was listening to the chapters and I'd reread them myself a little bit slower and highlight things and everything. And I just could not put it down. And it just got so many different things moving for me. My eyes opened up so much and I just found it extremely transformative. That's really all I can say. I felt like the, the messages on every single chapter just resonated with me so much and made a huge, huge impact. Um, so, you know, after after starting this podcast and having the success that we had with The Power of Now uh, by Eckhart Tolle in season one, and then in season two, we featured The Secrets of the Universe book series by Flor and Estelle Pamboro. Um, after that, I was on the hunt for a book in season three, and ultimately, one never came into fruition. So in the long break, and actually months before the break that we took between season three and four, uh, I thought, well, you know, keep digging, see what we can find, see what we can get and get, because we really, there was a bunch of them on the lists, and um, just for one reason or another, nothing came to fruition, so I thought, are we just maybe not going to do this again, you know, maybe we had two, and it's just going to be something in the past, and that'll be what it is, um, so we reached out, we reached out to a few larger books, and some already had some big deals going on, and, and those likely will still happen, they just weren't in time for season four, um, just all divine timing, right? So, uh, you know, ultimately there was a few who uh, also wanted massive royalty payments, which wasn't something that was in the cards for us, uh, which I was a little bit miffed over because it's basically free promotion for their book and something like 80% of people who listen to a book um, on a podcast or, or something, they will go out and buy a physical copy of the book or even an ebook because they want to read along. They want a bookmark. They want to they want to dive into these books a little bit deeper, especially something like this, like maybe um, some sort of a sci fi novel or something like that. They may not. But books like this, I can't remember the exact stats, but this is something that people want to get their hands on, especially once they listen to it. They're like, man, I got to have my hands on that book. I want to read it anytime I possibly want to. Um, so I thought that, you know, if people were going to ask for royalties, it wasn't really meant for the show. So, um, and I had been trying to reach out to the people from Oneness for quite a while, and uh, you know, ultimately my emails they were they were going out there into the universe, and they weren't returning. So, um, time and time again, I, I tried, and uh, you know, I guess I just had missed. But on a little bit of inspiration, I have no idea where it came from. Again, maybe this is the, the consequence. You know, I took some a little bit of an action, and here was the result. The consequence of me just getting that little bit of inspiration, uh, I sent it to another email address. So I can't quite remember if the domain that I was looking for was um, at Yahoo or Gmail, but basically I just swapped. I just said, maybe I'm just getting it wrong. Try one more time. And I did. And all I did was like basically forward the previous email and they received it. And Rasha replied, like, I don't know why I didn't get the email. I'm like, well, because I got it wrong. That's why. <laughs> but ultimately, she said yes, and I was over the moon. It literally happened the week before we decided to dive back in and start recording for season four. Um, so divine timing, and she graci graciously accepted and gave us the rights to read the book on the show. So uh, here we are. Here we are, ready to dive into this one. Um, you know, and, and basically the backstory of this book is uh, Rasha developed a dialogue with a consciousness that she simply identified as, or it identified itself as oneness. And I remember her asking in the in the intro, I won't actually read the intro of the book because uh, it goes into a lot of biographical stuff. I urge you to buy this one and check it out. But um, when she asked if, if it was God, the answer that it gave, and I actually do want to read the exact quotes because it's a pretty cool one. It says, when she asked the question, are you God? It says, as the drop of water is to the ocean, that is what oneness is. The essence of the drop is every bit the essence of the totality as you would understand God to be, yes, we are God, we are oneness. So that was, that was, that was awesome. That was a, one of the first things that I had read when I actually picked up the book because they didn't cover the intro in what I had listened to. And that was just something that just opened something up for me. So, um, you know, when I first was starting to follow along this with this book, um, it was in a very random way as well. Uh, you know, I guess in another maybe provincial way, uh, providential way, essentially they were reading it by what chapter bubbled up and randomly that was the chapter that, um, whatever random, whatever random number generator or something to that effect popped up. That is what was read for the day. And that's how it was presented to me originally. So I just went along with it. <clears throat> that was, that was basically the the mode of how it was going to be presented to everybody 
in the course of what we were listening to. I went along with it back then, but I want to do it in a whole different way now. These chapters in this book can actually be read in a very sequential way, or you can just read them randomly. So it worked for that first season where you could just pick a chapter and randomly read it. But in this one, I want to start from the beginning and go chapter to chapter. Um, but after we go through this entire book, I mean, really, you can pick this up, look at the table of contents and basically just read any one of those chapters. And it's not something that has to build upon itself. You don't have to read chapter one to understand chapter four. Each one is this just profound concept in and of itself. So there's so many reasons why I love this book. So we're just going to go and dive into this one. Um, but we're going to be reading this basically one chapter per episode. I'm going to try and get these out, uh, trying to get them out once a week all the way through. Uh, and probably going to mix this into the other episodes that we have in the lineup. But there's 44 chapters in this book. And I mean, it is a it is a thick one. I mean, it's not small font. So it's going to take us quite a while to get through it. And I think there's 400 plus pages in here. So uh, maybe we're going to be reading this one into the fall in season five. We shall see. Uh, but we're going to start digging in today. So before we get started, I wanted to mention that I will post a link in the show notes so that you can get this book. Um, I will also, for those of you who aren't listening on a podcast and you don't have show notes to look at, to look at uh, if you're listening on BNC TV or wherever you're listening to this on, um, if you don't have show notes to refer to, you can go to livethislife.org. And I will post the link under the podcast tab where you'll see a picture of the book and it will take you directly to Rasha's website where she wanted to refer all of you. The website is actually called onenesswebsite.com. So it's O-N-E-N-E-S-S-W-E-B. S I T E dot com. Again, I will link that and I will put that up on the screen right now as well. Um, but if you head to that website, she will actually post the books much cheaper than be able to get them on Amazon. And she would ask if folks, could, she, she did ask if folks could please get it there. You can go to Amazon and I think the books are around like $20 there. You can get them brand new from her for $16 or you can get them in near new condition for $11 and 11 cents from her website right now. Uh, and also along the way, I'll be doing some sort of deals and giveaways related to this book that I'll announce in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for those. But if you want to get your hands on this book, please go to that website. So without further ado, let's jump into chapters one and two since they're both fairly brief. Um, and we're going to dive into the transformative book, Oneness. All right, so I'm going to read chapters one and two, but I did want to read a brief section of the intro. Uh, I didn't want to have to do the entire thing, but um, I did want to mention a, a couple of the key paragraphs that were in this that I think that set the stage very well. So... This is part of the intro of oneness. As oneness guided me step by step through the agonies and exultation of the experiential voyage described in this book, I painstakingly documented the principles word for word like a secretary taking dictation directly onto a computer. I had never encountered concepts like this before, and I started to realize that what was writing itself through me was a foundation for a totally new level of understanding of the phenomenon we call life. As this material began to unfold, I found I was able to grasp the concepts I was transcribing in theory, yet it was hard for me to come to grips with the realization that even though I could now explain what was happening to me and to the rest of the world, my life was still a textbook example of Murphy's Law. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. What was I doing wrong? I pleaded to oneness. You can't teach this if you haven't lived it, Rasha, became the mantra that I had heard in reply. More times than I can count. Then, slowly as I continued to stumble into all of my predictable dramas, an entire lifetime worth of stuff, all the chaos, all the upheavals, all the frustration, and all the flashes of deja vu, the whole roller coaster of experience started to make sense. At the same time, I began watching the world as I knew it change before my eyes. I came to terms with the daunting realization that this was literally not the same world I was born in. Through these teachings, I started to recognize the fluid nature of a reality in the throes of a metamorphosis, the rules of the game, the way we were taught life was supposed to work, clearly didn't work anymore. Why was that? I wondered. As I wrestled with the endless stream of questions offered by my logical mind, 
the teachings of oneness began to lay the foundation foundations for seeing everything in our present day world from the timeless perspective of energy. Oneness explained that the vibrational momentum driving all of creation toward unity is the same momentum that people everywhere are experiencing in their daily lives. And everywhere I looked, I began to see the effects of the accelerated frequencies all around us playing out as human experience. I came to understand the dynamics of how we manifest our reality vibrationally and how our emotional response mechanism sets up the parameters for drawing our life experiences to us. I saw the symptoms of the process of ascension, the phenomenon of shifting into accelerated levels of reality all around me. I began recognizing the signs, applying the teachings, and discovering their potential. After a while, to my amazement, most of the down-to-earth life theme issues that I had struggled with all my life, the endless reruns of the same old movie started to ease up. Over time, those kinds of experiences stopped happening altogether. It was a miracle. The teachings in this book took me to the outer reaches of my own humanness and to the depths of the divinity I discovered within. Oneness, the presence that encompasses the full spectrum of that awesome journey, is the universal common thread that we all share with each other. It is a touch that is undescribable. Through the tears of joy, I reminded myself daily that I could not have imagined it. Now I understand the significance of the choices that each of us has made to be here in physical form in these extraordinary times. It's a level of understanding that came not as a learned philosophical concept with which to stimulate my mind, but as a timeless sense of knowingness that I unearthed from within, like the touch of oneness with which I have been so blessed. It's something that has to be experienced and believed. So I thought that intro was extremely powerful because I remember going through this book in the initial beginnings and it was definitely something that was transformative. And I remember after a certain amount of time that the same thing happened. A lot of those life lessons, a lot of the way that I viewed the world had completely transformed all around me. And the world around me just didn't seem the same anymore. And it never has really ever since. I think just once you have a level of awareness, once you listen to teachings like this and a whole lot of other things that are out there that are similar, you just start to become more aware that the chance happenings, the things that develop in your life might not be that. It could be more of the things that you draw to you that are divine to come to you for a specific reason, that everything's there to teach you a lesson. And I think that's one of the most profound things and the most profound realizations that I learned from this book. All right, so that being said, let's dive into chapter one of oneness. We are oneness. We are the embodiment of the God force, as are you. We are a drop of water. We are as of a drop of water as to the ocean, bonded in oneness to it. Let's start over. Action. All right, so let's dive into chapter one of oneness. The chapter title of this is called Oneness. We are oneness. We are the embodiment of the God force, as are you. We are as a drop of water is to the ocean, bonded in oneness to it, being of it and unto it, yet having identity and self-perception. The perception of self would be as the totality, the all-encompassing, the antithesis of limitation in all respects. It is toward this pinnacle of focus that you strive in the present moment, regardless of whether you are aware or unaware of such concepts. In uniting in oneness with all creation, you give full expression in the context of linear form to the multidimensionality that is your true state of beingness. By consciously recognizing the connection and allowing its unlimited expression through your form and through your consciousness, you open the door to the possibility of expansion and encompass the understandings and perceptions that characterize those states of being. It is toward that state of bonded union with the expanded levels of self that you strive in these times. By virtue of the fact that you are drawn to reading these words, you are functioning at a heightened level of awareness. 
Your perceptions and understandings regarding the nature of reality would by now have transcended what most concede to be the nature of what is. What is or is not has come to be the focus in your culture of considerable speculation. Some would have you believe that what you perceive as your reality is merely an illusion, and through your perceptions are symbolic representations of the thought forms that precipitated them. They are most decidedly real. Your experience, the reality as your senses have shown it to be, is real. Your world, the reality that your actions and thought forms have manifested in tandem with the others who cohabit it, is real. And your instinctive sensing of your own connectedness to the tapestry of life, which is not discernible to the physical senses, is very real indeed. It is toward the exploration of those connections toward the understanding of a destiny that is interwoven of intent and desire that we strive mutually. Reality as you would know it is to be well, reality as you know it to be will cease to be. You will not experience the shift that is to come as loss, though the circumstances that will transpire might indicate that interpretation. For in shifting to a higher octave of perception, you will come to embody in the moment of that shift the awareness that is the innate understandings that accompany the heightened states of beingness toward which your energy flows at an unprecedented pace. You will begin to experience glimpses of that expanded reality as you move closer to the shift in consciousness to come. You'll be able to see aspects of reality that most, whose perceptions are limited to the physical senses, are unable to sense. You will know the nature of your unlimited state of being without having read about it in books or heard the concepts spoken of by those who herald visions and prophecies of a new paradigm. You will ultimately defer to no one as you come to be empowered and to experience yourself as the aspect of the oneness that you indeed are. The enhanced perceptions to come will serve as a foundation for transcending those perceptions entirely. For they are limited to a view of reality expressed with the, within the context of time and space. The reality toward which you flow effortlessly, if you allow it, is unbounded by the linear concepts of time and space. It is a reality where physical perception, by definition, is superfluous. It is a result of a melting, a bonding, a joyful unity of the totality of your essence in harmony with what is now perceived to be, quote, others. Ultimately, there is no distinction between perception of, quote, self and that of, quote, others, for all will be oneness. We are that oneness. We are the unity of all that is. We are the unity of which you are indeed a part and toward the experience of which you strive, whether knowingly or not. We are your heart's longing to reunite with the source of your beingness. We are your deep-seated dream of bonding with the fragmented aspects of your own essence scattered since time immemorial throughout creation. And we are the impetus toward that unification. We are the invitation that calls you to action and awakens you from the stupor you call your life. We are the opportunity to purge yourself from the karmic baggage you carry as a testimony to the state of separation you embody. We are the farthest reaching cry of your very soul to have the self-imposed blinders removed that you may be permitted to truly see. We are the aspect of your own selfhood that transcends every level throughout creation, yearning in unison with you to be freed of the shackles of a reality defined by linear limitation. We are the ultimate end result of what has been referred to as ascension. We are as you are and as you are yet to be. You are a piece of divine essence, with consciousness, with identity. You are a fragment of your own expression and experience of the one. You are, programmed, you are a programmed time capsule that is coming to fruition on schedule. Having harvested a wealth of physical experience on your journey, ultimately, the understandings reaped from those adventures will have turned you up uh, toward an undisputed attunement with the higher vibration that resonates within you now. You have begun the process of unraveling the threads that have been interwoven through your lifetimes in the dream that you regard as your reality. And you have achieved a measure of clarity 
that enables you to recognize amongst your life dreams a commonality of intent and commonality of result that has shaped the identity that you recognize as you. Far from view of the experiences that you would trans that would transcend in their depth of perception, the awareness you garner from present experience. Far from view, yet firmly entrenched beneath the surface of your awareness are experiences of ancient incarnations whose influences help to choreograph the dramas of your life. In many respects, that which you are is a resonance of the sum total vibration of all you have been. The ultimate, the, all, the opportunity afforded you in this lifetime to transcend some of that programming. The opportunity before you now is to embody your history and simultaneously to reach for and to integrate the timeless aspects of self that have thus far eluded you. In so doing, you will experience yourself as the oneness that you are. And you will come to be that oneness in conjunction with the full collective of every aspect of you. Aspects that are what you are in their core essence, but recognize themselves as separate from you. This is the process at hand. This is the momentum toward which you strive with all else in your reality and beyond your reality in these times. This is the journey you have undertaken by coming into this form in this lifetime. And this is the journey that could take you beyond limitations of form in this lifetime. This is the journey that will carry you the full distance beyond the parameters of the entire concept of a lifetime to a state of being that is embodiment of timelessness, a state of being known as oneness. We are that oneness, and we have come to guide you home. So that is the end of chapter one. That one's a very short one, uh, which is why I want to do both chapters. But um, I feel like that one definitely helps paint a picture of what the purpose of this book is, to show you that separation was a complete illusion. And I think that is basically the place that I've come to in searching for a lot of different spiritual concepts that we basically came here as a division of a form of oneness from that spirituality. And then we spend an entire lifetime trying to figure out how to reconnect to it. And I feel like maybe if this was some sort of a game, if this was the purpose, then this is the book that is like the cheat book to that game. Like basically, uh, this is showing us that every experience, every person, every thing that is around us in our life is ultimately connected to us. And once we start to see a divinity in everything that we do and everything that we encounter and every person that we talk to, we start to react to it a little bit different because we realize that the separation is basically an illusion. Um, so yeah, let's dive into chapter two. This one is called A Glimpse into the Experience of Ascension. Integrating fragmented aspects of consciousness, attaining the perspective of one's own expanded multidimensional self. And I'll mention the titles to these chapters are basically what the gist of the chapter is about. So the very first one was just called Oneness. It was simple, short, and sweet. This one, again, is a glimpse into, into the experience of ascension, integrating fragmented aspects of consciousness and attaining the perspective of one's own expanded multidimensional self. You have come to this place in time for a multiplicity of reasons. You have come for the opportunity to transcend the parameters that define your existence. And in the same breath, you've come to deepen your connection with the interwoven aspects of your beingness that give your life definition in the truest sense. You have come to this experience you know as your life in order to be able to reject completely the consensus view of reality imprinted upon you since birth and to replace that structure of understanding with a perspective that totally transcends it. This is the first time in your personal history as an incarnate individual that your conscious awareness has been augmented with levels of energy that enable you to transcend your physical senses. This is the first incarnation in which you've been able to reinforce intuitive knowingness with experiential knowingness. This is the moment you've been waiting for, for eons of existence. For this is the lifetime that will catapult you beyond all you know to a depth of awareness and understanding you are yet unable to fathom. Trust that this process in which you are now, by now, deeply invested is unfolding as it's meant to. 
and that everything is indeed, in quote, divine order. You are a spark of divinity in the throes of activation. The programming for the process is deep-seated within you and will unfold at its own pace, regardless of steps you might be encountering to take, maybe you might be encouraged to take to accelerate that momentum. You may experience a sense of reassurance by participating in group activities targeted at expanding your consciousness. And you may indeed experience sensations indicative of amplified levels of energy during such activities. But know that the results of such exercises are, for the most part, short-lived. For the foundation of sustaining that energy is built from within, and the momentum of your growth is rooted in stillness. There is a place within the depths of one's being where opportunities that defy linear logic are able to unfold. The key to maximizing the pace of your process lies in the degree to which you are able to let go and cease directing the scenarios of your drama. Allow life to unfold for you and recognize the potential in the synchronicity that presents itself. Note the perfection in the results and consider the possibility that your best interests are best served by a level of awareness that transcends your conscious mind. Recognize your tendencies rooted in fear of a less than optimum outcome of your efforts to attempt to direct that outcome. Dispense with your prior understandings of how results are manifested and allow the circumstances that present themselves to nudge you in the direction of your highest possible good. As you become more comfortable with the process, you will begin to notice how easily the opportunities flow and how effortlessly you are able to manifest the results that serve you at the highest level. You stand at the threshold of a grand adventure, and the extent to which you are able to experience the fullness of that journey is determined by the extent to which you are able to let go of the scenarios that no longer serve you. You've noticed with rare exception that the circumstances of your life are unraveling at an unprecedented pace. You've begun to question what is happening as the structure of your life as you know it begins to crumble. You look around for explanations. You probe your own circumstances for clues that would justify the destruction of the familiar. At first, you may resist the impetus to dematerialize what has been the foundation of your reality. In time, you will come to recognize the inevitability of the momentum that guides you, for the momentum is unyielding, carrying you in a direction that is new yet feels comfortable and familiar. As you begin to release the constraints that bind you to circumstances you've, over, out, you've outgrown, you will discover that the directions of choice is found on a road you must travel alone. As you gather the fragments of the structure that crumbles around you, and as you cease trying to, quote, make sense of it, you will come to embrace the peace of knowing that the struggle is at least coming to an end and you will experience a sense of sweet detachment from what was and an openness of what is yet to be. As you extract yourself from your previous life script, you will feel deep compassion for the effects of your actions on the circumstances of others with whom you have shared history in this lifetime. Yet your focus remains clear as your recognition of the shift take place. As your recognition of the shift taking place within you provides the impetus to move forward and to release the ties that would bind you and hold you back. It is for you who now struggle with the circumstances of that shift in orientation to recognize the inevitability of that process. It is for you who struggle to hold on to know that, they, that the key to all you could become lies in your willingness to let go and to allow the metamorphosis in which you are deeply enmeshed to proceed. Once the initial resistance is overcome, there comes a total shift in focus to heart-centeredness. In this state of being, your perception of self and that of the world around you become intertwined. You begin to dance with the energies of life, allowing the ebb and flow to determine the direction. You begin to recognize the potential in the joyous adventure that beckons you to venture forth. And choices that might have once appeared to be reckless come to be viewed as divinely guided. You become aware of the heart space within and the song that emanates from it. You begin to harmonize with the breath of life pulsing within that core essence. And in that moment, you awaken to the recognition of the key to all you are and are yet to be. 
The rise and fall of breath of life determines the pace at which one can travel on one's journey. There is a quickening that occurs quite naturally when you allow the breath to guide you into the depths of your very being. Relaxing the physical senses, relinquishing the sense of conscious direction, being willing simply to be in the moment with all that is. These are the parameters of the process that will guide the way if you permit the process itself to be in control. There is little distinction between the in-breath and the out-breath when one shifts into heart-centered state. Ultimately, there's no conscious awareness of breath at all, merely a connectedness to a sense of self that transcends one's definition of self. One experiences a state of peace that is both profound and inconsequential, as it is one's very birthright. It becomes the rise and fall of the breath, and in that rhythm, one begins the process of expansion that opens the door. Riding in the wings of the rise and fall of the breath, one begins to experience a perception of self that transcends the limitations of physical form. One's energy field expands. One begins to encompass, in actuality, the expanded parameters of that field, and one bonds in oneness in that moment with an expanded aspect of self, an aspect of who one truly is. Initially, the expanded spate of exper- extended spate, state of experience in the moment and surrenders to it in the moment. Ultimately, one becomes that moment and becomes one with that expanded sense of self. The higher understandings and heightened perceptions of the expanded self becomes integrated in one's conscious awareness. And one is able to make the shift that enables one to transcend completely the limitations that bind one to an earthbound experience. Through the vehicle of breath, one is able to embody the higher state of beingness while retaining physical form. This is the experience you would refer to as ascension. One does not, as is popularly believed, cease to materialize in the physical form in this process. Rather, one becomes to it. Be, one comes to embody such successive level, as each is embraced and encompassed. One retains form as the heightened sensibilities are integrated, and one is able to resonate at higher levels of expanded consciousness and to perceive the world as it truly is, and increasingly comes to be. The understandings expand exponentially at each level, as each level is attained and integrated. Ultimately, one comes to embody all aspects of one's interdimensional lineage simultaneously. One comes to perceive as superfluous the physical definitions of identity that would keep one tethered to a reality that increasingly lacks relevance. One walks with an awareness of all that was recognizable reality and is keenly attuned to what is recognizable reality. And one is able to distinguish among simultaneous perceptions of what becomes an increasingly multifaceted world. There are many who have glimpsed this state of being and have explored fleetingly the perceptions of its offers. Inherent in the process is the opportunity to retain those levels of beingness and ultimately to experience embodiment in the realities they represent simultaneously. One can anticipate being able, for example, to experience multiple levels of reality, not by relinquishing one for another, but by encompassing sequentially each of those levels in, quote, becoming each expanded state of being all of which we are, in fact, all of which are, in fact, you. Although your path is your own, and the pace at which you travel is a matter of choice, you will not be expected to make the journey alone. Each progressive level is an investment in consciousness that is committed to the process of integration as you are, as you reach energetically for and merge with. Each successive level of self You embrace the loving intent of that expanded identity to integrate all that you are into its repertoire of awareness and response. As the levels of your consciousness intertwine, the distinction between those aspects of self cease to be, and oneness is achieved. There may be multiple levels of integration, as fragmented aspects of what is, in fact, you merge in consciousness and become a collective of beingness that attains oneness simultaneously with a mutually shared Quote, higher self. It is indeed possible when integrating what could be considered to be lost aspects of self 
to lose conscious awareness of the differentiation of one's original identity. One bonds energetically with the collective, and ultimately, the sense of separation is obscured and gives way to the perception of one's expanded multidimensional self as that which one is. One integration has taken place. Once integration has taken place, one is able to transcend the limitations of one's previous focus. In doing so, one is able to remain in harmony with all that previously defined one's existence while simultaneously opening to the to encompassing the fullness of the totality of that stage in one's process. There is no need to direct this process through your intent, for it is who will be directed, for it is you who will be directed and not the other way around. One's sense of it is of being in a state of absolute receptivity, of surrendering totally on every possible level, the need, the compulsion, the control, to control the process. One becomes as a leaf on the wind, embodying a willingness to be carried with the momentum of the process, knowing unquestioningly that one's best interests and one's well-being are being seen to in every possible way. In a sense, one becomes the wind while retaining the self-perception of the leaf. One embodies self-definition and form while merging into totality with momentum and direction. The energies become one, and the transfer of the form from here to there is achieved. Once there, the qualities of momentum and direction are retained as an integral part of one's self-perception, and one is able to eventually, at will, to merge with that momentum. One is able to ride the energy of momentum into the direction of that momentum, for one would be a complete harmony with that momentum. One would be the harmony that uni unites momentum and form. This is the direction in which you are headed in these times. This is a fragmentary glimpse of the world that awaits you. The world would be less the sense of a destination than of the journey itself. For the destination would be in relinquishing the need for a destination. The objective would be in the releasing the need to know. The opportunity would be in turning over the reins that would govern momentum and direction and to experience the perfection of the ride. The question is, are you willing to risk relinquishing all that you know, the entire structure of the belief system that defines the constructs of your reality for the chance that you may experience the perspective of your own expanded self? Are you willing to acknowledge that, quote, truth, as your experience has shown it to be, may not be the entire picture? Are you willing to consider the possibility that all you may value could, in fact, be worthless in the higher sense? Are you willing to accept that you are, in fact, ready for this journey? By virtue of the fact that you're even considering such questions, know that the process has indeed begun. It is not a question of if so much as a question. It is not a question of if so much as a question of how and at what pace will you proceed. From the perspective of being immersed in a linear physical reality, your challenge is now in your willingness to risk that the information that resonates to you as truth is actually truth. And that your objective in this stage in your development is to relinquish your hold on the limitation imposed by reality as you've known it to be. You are here to consider and ultimately to embrace the full multidimensional spectrum of your beingness, that which you are. You are here to begin to experience that expanded sense of self and to walk in the fullness of that state of being one step at a time. In this moment, you are all you are yet to become. For, quote, time as you know it is not a factor in what's transpiring in what you consider to be, quote, the now. All that is to happen has happened energetically. What is left to achieve is the physical manifestation of that expression of energy. This would explain why, at times, you are seemingly drawn to a particular set of circumstances. This would explain why you experience what you would consider to be, quote, synchronicity. 
And this would explain why you experience a sense of disharmony when you resist suggestions that nudge you to act upon certain opportunities. There are any number of avenues to the crossroads in which you may be headed at any given moment. When you take up the threads of a scenario that presents itself to you as, quote, synchronicity, you experience the manifestation of that particular avenue. Those particular sets of circumstances and the individuals who feature in it were those threads not taken up, be assured that other potential, quote, life-altering events would prevent them, present themselves to you, scripted to deliver you to the very same crossroads, albeit a very different route. Forgive yourself the misdirected notion that you have strayed off track by letting certain opportunities pass you by. Know that you will get to where you're going by any number of alternative means. By definition, it cannot be otherwise. Likewise, forgive yourself the misdirected notion that you've impeded your own progress by your own judgment of your performance in a given set of circumstances. The very responses those scenarios invoke within you are those calibrated energetically to deliver you to the state of beingness in which you recognize consciously your tendency to respond in that way and to relinquish your need to do so. I'm going to pause right there because I think that's probably one of the most important lessons that I did get from this entire book. And it's something that I still try to embody to this day. And it's something I talk about frequently on the podcast where you basically become so aware of your feelings and emotions and judgments of certain situations and people that you start to basically judge those things in the moment. And by judging those moments more frequently, you end up basically governing your reaction. So I'm going to read that paragraph one more time because I think that one was probably one of the most meaningful ones that I've read so far. Likewise, forgive yourself the misdirected notion that you've impeded your own progress by your own judgment of your performance in a given set of circumstances. The very responses that those scenarios invoke within you are those calibrated energetically to deliver you to a state of beingness in which you recognize consciously your tendency to respond in that way and relinquish your need to do so. Once you see the pattern, it is likely that you can cease repeating it and experience a rival at the crossroads that will carry you to a different direction entirely. In the present period, it is likely that you will experience a sense of coming to completion on a multitude of levels with the recurring themes that have dominated this lifetime. As a way of punctuating the point in a question, it is likely that your experience will begin to serve you extreme variations on that theme. This is an indication that you are at a completion with a particular leg of your journey, and that is indeed time to move on. Quote, time, as you know it to be, is moving forward at an unprecedented pace. Events appear to be crammed into an improbably short space, and at times seem to be happening simultaneously, which in fact they are. It is crucial, as your rendezvous with oneness draws you ever nearer, that you come to completion with the life themes that tether you to this reality. It is crucial that you attain a state of detachment from the energy charges that have magnetized you habitually through this lifetime. It is crucial that you recognize the common thread in the web of dramas that, have, that you have woven that continue to ensnare you. And it is crucial that you allow yourself the grace of your own humanness in responding to these recurring situations and love yourself for it. When you're able to stand back from the overview of the dramas in which you have played a starring role and see yourself in the award-winning as the award-winning performer that you truly are, you are well on your way to completing the journey. Until you've mastered what you have come here to experience, the level of beingness that seeks to integrate you into its journey to oneness cannot do so. As you reach out energetically with a heartfelt desire to bond with your own higher expressions of beingness, know that the aspect of self reaches for you too and adds its energy to the equation of your totality. Until you're able to liberate yourself vibrationally from the chronic patterns of response that keep you, quote, stuck in endless repetitions of the same old song, your higher aspects of self is unable to integrate you without jeopardizing its own vibrational levels. 
Likewise, you may sense a tethering beneath the surface of your conscious awareness to deep-seated emotional patterns of response, which are out of proportion to the circumstances that evoke them. Consider the very real possibility that what links energetically to you in these moments are aspects of your own being who have been excluded from you and who seek to integrate with you in their journey toward oneness. From their perspective, you are the heightened state of beingness toward which they strive. You are the master they seek. You are the enlightened perspective that they have tasted fleetingly and in which they yearn to bond with at the deepest heart level. Your own emotional response to given situations in your life opens the door to parallel scenarios with parallel energetic, quote, triggers at other levels of creation. The common ground and the paths upon which you will emerge energetically with all aspects of self are the emotions you share at the deepest level. When you experience a particularly poignant response to a given situation, one that you may judge to be extreme, consider before judging yourself too harshly that you may be feeling what you may be feeling is depth of emotion you share mutually with an aspect of self that has been denied and was left behind along the way. By repressing the expression of the depths of your feeling, you only serve to prolong the separation between you and that aspect of yourself and to invite repeat performances of scenarios which are calculated to produce the same emotional response. It is imperative that you open your heart to the very real sensations of hurt, sorrow, outrage summoned to you by circumstances and the dramas in which you play a part. In doing so, you pave the way for the reintegration of a missing piece of your own being, whose life theme may be the embodiment of those very responses, and who strives from his depths to transcend them. Without the reintegration of these lost fragments of your own consciousness, you will be unable to complete your journey in the way that some totality of your beingness would wish to. Without giving yourself permission at this time frame to truly feel the depths of your emotional response mechanism, you're holding yourself back in the way that really matters at the, every level of creation. You are a multidimensional being. You are not limited to the particular identity that you've come to regard as you. There are viable aspects of self that live unbeknownst to you in parallel realities who reach out instinctively for the lost aspect of self that you would consider to be you. To these beings, you are missing, you are a missing note in a chord that defines their very existence. You are the harmony toward which they strive and without which they are unable to achieve it. The key to your full participation in this multidimensional effort is to be present in all that you are and all that you do so that you're able to be present in all that you are to become. Be conscious of what you are feeling now and how you are responding in the dramas of your daily life. Be honest with yourself in the acknowledgement of your emotional responses and not be so hasty in rejecting within your own repertoire of sensibilities the poignant feelings that you might have yourself believe are, quote, beneath you. Your emotional response mechanisms are very real. The key to all you would accomplish in this lifetime hinges upon your willingness to embrace all that you are, the chance that you may come to experience in oneness all that you truly are. And that is the end of chapter two. And as you can see, this is the reason why I absolutely love this book. I mean, this if this doesn't wake you up, if this doesn't make you truly awakened, you know, I, I've said it a quite a few times and I'm quite critical of the whole term of wokeness. I, I think it, it's, it has gone down like political agendas and stuff. This, this book leads to a genuine awakening. And I think that is the status that people should be uh, striving to be toward. You know, there is a difference between being aware of things in the world and, and being aware of things, um, you know, that might need to change versus an awareness of everything and an awareness of all the circumstances that go around you, the triggers that pop up in your life and transcending those triggers, you know, whether it's a person, a place, if it's traumas in your life that have triggered you from certain times, what is it that you're supposed to learn from those traumas? What is it that you're supposed to learn from a particular trigger, whether it's a person at the water cooler? Um, what is it that you're supposed to learn in every one of those circumstances that you deem as either painful or unpleasant and it keeps on coming up in your life as that shitty relationship, as uh, you know, a difficult job, a difficult person, those, those scenarios that you keep on finding yourself in, why do you keep ending up there? 
what is it that keeps drawing you back there? And what lessons are you supposed to learn through those original circumstances that you haven't learned? What is it that you need to transcend so that you can ultimately move on to a whole different state of being? And I think that's what this chapter is completely focusing on. And I think as this book builds, you'll see that each one of these chapters is its own individual toolbox towards different challenges that come up in our lives. And as this book progresses, and as you progress and as an awakened being, um, and you move along that path of ascension, and really that's all that ascension is, it's just a continual process of awakening. Um, I've always looked down upon people who said they've reached enlightenment, um, you know, and I kind of mirror ascension and enlightenment together, uh, same with awakening. I don't think you can reach enlightenment. I think enlightenment is a progression that you'll never really finish. I don't think it's possible in this form that we're in. And I think as long as we are embodying all the things that this book describes, and as we go from chapter one to chapter, I think 44 in the back, um, yeah, 44, as we move through every single one of those chapters, we're going to be building on something. And every one of them is a lesson that we have to try to perfect. And once we do that, we could become an entirely higher level of, of a self-aware being. And uh, I think that's why this book is so absolutely amazing. So uh, it's a privilege to read this one yet again. Uh, a huge thanks to Rasha. And don't forget to head to the website. It's onenesswebsite.com to get your copy of this much cheaper than it is on Amazon and, uh, and keep your ears open. I am going to have some sort of giveaways that involve this book in the coming weeks early on in the reading so you can take advantage of it. But having your hands on this book, um, a physical copy of it, uh, I've never been a big fan of Kindles and stuff. Um, I love to bring this book with me wherever I go. This thing is probably more miles on it than anything that I own. Um, it's getting a little rough around the edges, so I might order myself another one. Um, but this this book, like I said, this has become basically like a Bible. I mean, some of the chapters that are in here to entice you a little bit, uh, the next chapter that we're about to read, chapter three that we'll do in the next episode that we read the book is entitled Your Energy Field as the Co-Creator of Your Circumstances, The Power of Your Thoughts and Words as Tools of Manifestation, Breaking the Patterns that Create Unwanted Outcomes. So they all have that general theme. I mean, going all the way up to chapter 15, the vibrational perceptions from manif uh, maintaining physical wellness in a rapidly shifting reality. Chapter 12, the elusive dream that is reality. So these are all such enticing titles. And if you don't love this book by the end, then I'm sorry. There's not much I can do for you, but I love this one. I hope you love it as much as I do. And uh, thank you all for tuning in for this episode of Live This Life. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed. We'll see you next time. If you are a conscious thought leader, an expert on inspiration, or have your own amazing story to tell about how you've manifested your best life, we want you on the show. You can connect with us by writing to connect at livethislife.org. That's C-O-N-N-E-C-T at livethislife.org. Or you can reach out to us through the show's Calendly page at calendly.com forward slash livethislife. And be sure to check out everything going on with the podcast at livethislife.org.